I love you, bro, Jeff. You don't train like a Let's watch the video. I'm going to comment and see. Did I, in fact, call him a put? Like, we're just going to learn. Just sit and watch. Coach Greg, and today I'm going to attempt to clear the air with Jeff Nippert, okay? You guys know we've gone back and forth a lot in the past, and I've said I usually agree with most of what Jeff says, okay? I watched a video that he recently put out, which was, in fact, really good, and I made a comment, and the video is called... Is RP actually killing your gains? Respond to Athlean X and critics, and critics is, is Coach Greg, okay? In the video, he makes five points, of which three of them are related to me. The first two are about Jeff, but I'm gonna watch the video and respond, but let me first read the comment that I wrote, just so you know I've already seen the video. I wrote, good work on the video. Great arguments presented, explained, and a take home applicable info you can use today in regards to the use of RP. Jeff then wrote, but Greg, at one point or another, you've said all of the things I've argued against in this video. Did you change your mind on all of them? If so, a public recanting of your previous statements, example, studies are for pussies, RP is overcomplicated, it's no good for beginners, etc. seems due. Okay, so I got on the phone with editor Steve, who watches the videos I make about 10 times each time, remembers it more than me, and I said, hey, did I actually say it? And he's like, I don't remember. So we're trying to find footage where I said, studies are for pussies, RP is overcomplicated, it's no good for beginners. I think I remember saying, a lot of times these studies use people who don't train hard or, or maybe they're not advanced bodybuilders, they're not professional bodybuilders, and they're just average folks. I don't know if I said, studies are for pussies, as in reading a study or learning from a study is for pussies. Like, because I read studies all the time and I train harder than last time. I don't consider that I train like a pussy. And by pussy, I mean like not training that hard, okay? The, not training hard. That's what we're talking about here. I don't remember calling Jeff a pussy. I remember saying he trains like one, as in doesn't train hard. And if you watch his videos more recently, he's actually training harder than he was. And I even remember him making some form of a response video saying he's analyzed his efforts and he's gonna start training harder that maybe he didn't quite go hard enough for a while. He was kind of like busy and doing videos and he was gonna put more effort. Jeff should train harder. He literally did a video on it. So I'm like, boom, I'm watching that video. And I've seen more effort and it's paid off, okay? So let's watch the video. I'm gonna comment and see, did I in fact call him a put, like, we're just gonna learn, just sit and watch. Starting with a recent video from Jeff Cavalier of Athlean X, where he labels RPE as a quote, really poor excuse. Now, let me just start by saying that I do think most of us creators here on YouTube actually have the same end goal. We just wanna help people get the best results we can. And it's perfectly fine with me if we disagree about some of this stuff. So I agree with Nippert. I think we're all trying to just help. All of us are trying to help, okay? We might not all agree on exactly the same thing, but I do think we're all genuinely trying to help people to train better and improve their lives. And I'm watching him do a set of curls that will do an RP of eight, and it does in fact look like he had two reps left in the tank. I do think that's an effort of about an eight on 10. A beginning lifter could put even less effort than that and still make gains, okay? And then next, he shows an RP of 10, and in fact, I would say that's an RP of 10.4 because he went more than to failure. He went to failure 10 reps and tried to go more than 10. He tried to do 11, which is all out, and he went past 10. So when he says RP of 10, I personally call that 10 point something. You can call it 10.5 if you will. Beginners don't need to train that hard. Intermediates probably don't need to train that hard either. Maybe a bit, maybe one or two sets, depends, okay? So RP, it can be good because yes, if you understand it and you know what an RP looks like and feels like, it is a benefit. But most beginners, they don't know what that is. Okay, and in my defense, Jeff did literally say in a video with over half a million views that beginners, they suck at estimating RPEs. So what this study tells us basically is that people, especially beginners, are bad at gauging their RPE, particularly by three to four reps. If you are in fact a beginner, my take home message would be, learn proper technique, use good form, and just train half ass. At the start, just go in and do it. And if you're sore, don't go harder than last time. If you're not sore and you're, you're training, and it's like, yep, and the next day you go in and you're never sore, well, I think you can try to go harder than last time. 
If it's written down in a book and it says RP5 and you don't know what that is, it might not work because you might have gone RP2. But if you read, go harder than last time, and you're like, well, I did 80 pounds for 10 reps. I'm going to do 80 pounds for 11, and I think that that actually helps more than saying RP of 5, and then next week RP of 6, because I don't know if the beginner knows the difference between an RP of 5 and 6. So I do, in fact, think that RP can be useful for a beginner even if they have the proper coaching and they understand the definition and what it feels like. I just don't know if everyone knows what that feels like. And hey, it's girls get it. It's a pussy. She doesn't train hard. She usually just sits in a background and doesn't train and she's a pussy. Just like it's useful to know how many sets to do and how many reps to do, I think it's equally useful to know how hard to push each set. And just as hard as possible or harder than last time isn't good enough in my opinion. Beginners shouldn't just show up to the gym and go all out as hard as you can go, ah, no. Hard as possible, that's not what I say. That's what I say for me, because I'm a pro bodybuilder, an advanced lifter, and once you're at the top, you need to go harder than last time. You can't expect to make gains training half-ass. You can't, okay? So that's what I'm saying. So you see, me and Jeff is still, we're agreeing, even though maybe it looks like we're not. And it's the same thing with RPE. Counting RPE doesn't imply you train any less hard, it just means you're counting how hard you're training, just like everyone else is counting their sets and reps. And yes, I agree with Jeff, just because you're training RP doesn't mean you're not training hard. If you're saying, if you go to the gym and you're training an RP of 10, then clearly you're training hard, you're training all out. Probably harder than the people that just go to the gym and saying, hey, I'm training really hard. They're not counting how hard, they're just saying, oh, I just go harder than last time. If you go to the gym and you're like, I know what a 10 feels like and I'm going for a 10, then absolutely you're training hard. My critique of saying RP training is when the RP zone is low. By that I mean if a program says you need to leave three or four reps in the tank all the time and you're at the intermediate or above level, I don't think you're training hard enough to maximally stimulate muscle growth or muscle hypertrophy. Okay, I don't think it's enough. I think you need to train harder than last time. So Jeff is training harder than last time using RP training. So he's using both, it's meshing both worlds, using Coach Greg's philosophy and Jeff's philosophy, intertwined into one, making the best of everything. If you wanna get better at using RPE, then you just have to reflect on your set and think about, okay, how hard was that set? So the part of the video that I really liked and why I commented where he had the take home method was he literally gave this advice, he said. So if you're a new lifter or you're new to RPE, here's what I'd recommend you do. I call this an RPE test set. So the next time you're doing an exercise that you can fail safely on, let's say an incline dumbbell press, once you get to a point where you think you could do two more reps, call it out, say out loud, okay, I'm at an RP8 now, and then actually push it to failure to see if you rated it correctly. So you practice, you get it, and then you learn what two reps in the tag feels like. You try that with various numbers. Try it with six. Six, and then you see if you can do four more, for example. And if you're wrong, well, you learn from that. So that was the take home message that I watched Jeff give that I thought, wow, that's really good information. So I don't think I'm saving face in the comment section by writing what I wrote. I think I'm just saying, hey, good work. And just saying, I see this. And so despite what happened in the past, I can impartially watch a video without bias and say, hey, I like that. It's good information. I'm not out here to just hate on Jeff. I don't do that. I tell you what I think. I call it the BS, spews reviews, and I didn't see any spews reviews. And I said so. Doesn't mean I'm saving face or sucking up or whatever you think it is. It's just me telling you what I think. Like, that's what I always do. I just say what I think. Last comment from me, but his own thoughts in the video on his channel are in complete contradiction with nearly everything I said here. Really? I don't think it is. They go in the exact opposite direction. On his channel, he's literally called me and my colleagues and their life's work pussies. What? I call Jeff a pussy? Jeff overall doesn't train that hard. I just, I've watched many of his sets and it's not hard. I can prove Jeff trains like a pussy most of the time. I'm sorry, but that's the friggin' truth of the matter. And his colleagues pussies? Two to three reps shy of failure is close to failure. Come on, no it's not. Two to three reps shy of failure is a warm up set for this boy. 
I don't train like a pussy. So you train like a pussy, Mike. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that may be very, very well be the case. And research studies, pussy. It's not like a bash Jeff Nippard video. It's just a don't do what he's doing in this case because most of the time his information is great and he's backing it up with science, which is great. But it's not just science, it's practical too, guys. And remember, scientific studies, they're not always perfect. One thing I really hate in this world is that people don't believe me when I know I'm telling the truth about something. I know I'm not lying. I know that when I wrote that comment, I was being sincere and meaning what I said and saying what I mean and saying, I like this, it's a practical comment, you can take it home and use it. And that's exactly what I was referring to. Okay, so to say it's just saving face is, no, it's me just saying good job. Like I said, if he really thinks they're great arguments, a great argument is by definition a convincing one, then it's only fair that he update his own stance on a lot of things. So I'm updating in this video my stance on all those lots of things. So maybe you start on day one and you're, and you're doing RPE of your beginner five, but once you've trained harder and you're more used to it, it has to be approaching that failure or beyond failure. So if you, if you had to do a set of 12 reps and you got 11 and you could have done 12, then you didn't go hard enough. That could be at the level you're at. Depends on where you are in your training. So I do in fact think that RP can be useful for a beginner even if they have the proper coaching and they understand the definition and what it feels like. I just don't know if everyone knows what that feels like. And hey, it's Girl Skit and it's a pussy. She doesn't train hard. She usually just sits in a background and doesn't train and she's a pussy. So hopefully it's updated. And argument number three is that RPE, or sometimes just science in general, is for pussies. It's done by pussies, or it's done on pussies. I know Doucette has said this in a video. <laughs> I mean, how can you not just laugh? Okay, RP is for pussies, done on pussies, by pussies, and the pussies, and lots of pussy, okay? This is what I said. This is what I said it meant. The people that they do studies on are often not advanced bodybuilders or pro bodybuilders. They're often not training that hard. Now, most, you know, most literature is on people who are relatively untrained or completely untrained. So you could surmise hypothetically that going really close to failure to failure is much better for the very advanced and it has a very distinct benefit. And I'm open-minded to that. But as noticed, most of Greg's audience is not advanced and they would do very fine with submaximal training. So basically he agrees with me. He, he's like, but most people aren't advanced. Most of my audience watching is not advanced. I'm not saying the science is for pussies. I read the science and I don't consider that I don't train hard. The science is for everyone, but don't use science and make an excuse to train less hard than you should. Okay. You need to train hard to make gains. Don't look for an article. You're going to read 50 articles. You're going to find one that says, oh boy, if you train hard to failure, you're not going to make gains unless you're on PDs and maybe, but oh, you're natural, never train hard and only train once a year because you don't want to overload the body. Don't listen to that. That's what I'm saying or sometimes just science in general, is for pussies. It's done by pussies, or it's done on pussies. The research is done by pussies. It's not what I'm saying. I don't think that somebody that uses their brain to do research is a pussy at all. In fact, the opposite. Do you know how much work goes into... Of course he does. He knows. I know. I have a master's in kinesiology. You think I haven't done any studies? I haven't done any research? I don't know what goes into it, how much hard it is to do that. People who do this research are hard workers and they're smart, okay? You don't get PhDs and stop being an idiot. You need to have a certain amount of intellect, above average at least, to do that. So I'm not saying you're a pussy if you do research. I'm not saying you're a pussy if you study. In fact, the opposite. I have a lot of respect for people that put a lot of work and dedication and trying to be the best they can be. People that work harder than last time. It's not all about in the gym. It's not about in the kitchen. It's also with your job or your work or your school. Now, I know Doucette has said this in a video and I've heard Ripito say the same basic thing about RPE recently. I just want you to think, don't rely on RPE if you don't understand it for an excuse to train less hard than you know you should. I go to the gym and I talk to people and they'll explain to me about their RP and they're doing this. And I'm like, I watched your last three sets and dude, you didn't train hard at all. It looked like you warmed up for three sets. Like it wasn't hard. And they're like, yeah, I did 30 sets. I'm like 30 sets of chess. Like obviously you're training easy. You're doing so much volume. Who could train hard? I'm like, I did eight sets total really hard. Did you see me? I couldn't get a rep. I did so many sets. Like, so that's what I'm trying to say. The training protocols used in studies are usually a lot more hardcore than you think. 
Just look at this recent study from Bjornsson and colleagues out of Norway. Obviously, some studies are in fact done on people that train really hard and are advanced, but not many. I wonder how many studies he can find on IFBB pro bodybuilders and how they train. I don't know many, and I don't know personally if those people train hard, okay? They had national level powerlifters do blood flow restriction training to see if it could help with muscle growth. And just look at the protocol. They're asked to do a study where they're training completely different than they do in the gym, and of course it's hard. Take a bunch of advanced powerlifting strongman athletes and tell them to do a bike race against Coach Greg. Oh my goodness, it was the hardest leg workout of my life. Yeah, because you don't bike right. Every subject says this is the hardest I've ever trained in my life. In the lab, like the environment in the lab is you have like six other people in the lab at the same time. You're doing the same exercises, so now it becomes competitive. They always admit, especially our, our lower body studies, like they're like, I've never trained my legs that hard. Does that not show that maybe they don't actually train that hard in the gym after all? Oh yeah, I trained so hard all the time and then I did a research study and I trained harder than ever before. Well, why didn't you do that in the gym and that would make it training harder than last time? Just giving you the counter argument being impartial. But for the most part, the same scientific principles of what works for muscle growth applies across the spectrum of lifting experience. But if you can find a significant effect in beginners in eight weeks, then it's reasonable to assume that you could also see an effect in more advanced trainees. It would just take you longer to notice it. You can't just take a bunch of beginners and put them through a workout for eight weeks and then assume that that same workout could have the same type of an effect on an advanced trainer. It might have no effect or in fact do the exact opposite. A beginner might make amazing progress on hardly any training. And you can't say, oh, well, let's apply that information to them and say, see, 10 sets of 10 that worked there for the beginner. So 10 sets of 10 probably have some kind of effect for the advance. It might have the opposite effect. It might in fact be the opposite. Or just like this, take some really hard training. Let's say, let's train to failure, five sets to failure. Let's take a bunch of beginners and do it. And they do that for eight weeks and they get worse. And you're like, ah, well see, training to failure, it's not a good idea. See, the study had showed it because look, we took this group of people and they trained to failure and it got worse. Who was that group of people? Was it Coach Greg? Was it John Meadows? Was it advanced lifters that have been training for a long time? Was it a professional bodybuilder? Probably not. Not everyone can read a study and make sense of it. It takes a lot of skill and a lot of knowledge to be able to read the study and argue and analyze it critically and say, does that make sense in all situations in the real world? It is hard to do. I do in fact believe that Jeff has the ability to analyze and research the information the way that I do. I think he can read this and make sense of things. And point number four is RP is not accurate and listen, it's not for most beginners, but it is for more advanced people. Especially beginners are bad at gauging their RPE. More advanced lifters, yeah, there's some of you who are watching this are clearly advanced and you clearly know this. This is great for you and you can use it. But listen, the majority of people, the average person that's watching this information, you just need to train harder than last time. I mean, you really just do. And yeah, you might know RPE in this, but even if you know it, you still need to train harder than last time. Whatever that RP zone is for you, probably beneficial to add a rep to that. And point number five, there, there's too much info and Jeffy literally agrees with this. You can't go to the gym if you're a beginner and expect to know all this stuff. It's just like, go to the gym and learn how to live properly. Don't worry about all this scientific mumbo jumbo. Eventually you get to an intermediate or advanced level of training. And if you want to learn more and this interests you, and it does 5% of people want to train with the data and the stats and the science, and that's great for you and it applies to you and that's awesome. I'm just saying for most people, they just want the quick and easy info. They want to get into the gym and train and not be bogged down with every single last detail. Okay. I try to keep it simple. I could make it complicated, but I choose not to because I think it helps more people to explain it the way I did. Nothing wrong with Jeff trying to explain it a bit more scientific and to go at RP and use that. And if it applies to you, fantastic. Hopefully this clears the air. GregDuset.com for coaching. Greg Duset IFB Pro. Bloop it up. Two videos. Watch the bottom. Then watch the top. And until next time, buy my freaking cookbook and training book. I am out. So, I mean, I don't want to be pedantic or anything, but Jeff does clearly state RP is not a good tool for beginners. So, I mean, he's saying I'm all against it, but 
He's kind of against it too, in a way, whatever. 